Hello and welcome to Awesome Astronomy on YouTube. And if you want a quick answer to grab and go, the Moon is 238,854 miles away from Earth. On average, it gets closer and further. And we measure it with a laser that proves NASA went to the Moon. And the Moon's slipping away from us every year. Surely you want to keep watching now. It's a fun fact that no orbits in the solar system are perfectly circular. It's also a fun fact that Galileo and Bruno got into bother for saying the planets orbit the Sun, but Johannes Kepler didn't, despite going much further. Kepler managed to sidestep the Catholic Church's wrath, despite adding further insult with his newly discovered elliptical orbits, which cut against centuries of belief in the divine perfection of circles, and he did this by suggesting they actually boost the notion of heavenly purpose and design. The Pope seems to have fallen for it, not least because Kepler himself was a very religious man, and nobody had to die this time, so that was good. But elliptical they are. The planets orbit the Sun in ellipses, and the moons orbit the planets in ellipses, and that means none of these objects are the same distance away all the time. They have periods in their orbits when they are closer and further away, and we just take an average for simplicity. Unless, of course, we're sending a spacecraft to the Moon, when knowing its exact position at every given time is vitally important, but more on that a little later. Astronomers refer to the Moon's closest point to us as its perigee, and its further point in its orbit as apogee. So the Moon's perigee is 225,309 miles away, and its apogee is 251,903 miles away. And we give its average distance as 238,854 miles. Now figures like that are quite unsatisfying because large numbers don't have context. So 238,000 miles on the one hand sounds a long way away if you're gonna have to get there, but no distance at all compared to the distance to say the Sun, or Pluto, or the next star system. So for context, the Moon is 30 times the Earth's diameter away, which is much further away than I always think, probably because that's not easy to put in a science book or a website image. And to bring it back down to Earth again, Mars is 766 times further away than that. So onto that question about how we know. 238,854 miles sounds very precise, suspiciously precise. Well, before the Apollo missions, we used arithmetic and Kepler's laws of planetary motions to give us close but rough figures that were quite unverified. No way to verify them. But then last century, as we developed radar, we bounced radio waves off the moon to give us more accurate figures with some certainty behind them. These were accurate enough to land probes on the Moon and timing how long communication signals took to get to those probes and back again refined this distance. If you're interested, there's a one and a quarter second time delay in signals leaving the Earth at the speed of light and being received at the Moon, a two and a half second round trip. Then in 1969, NASA sent humans to the Moon, a fact that still bothers a lot of people who for some reason that I can't fathom, are desperate to convince people it didn't happen. <laughs> it did. And NASA was super smart. They not only achieved this incredible technological feat, but they also gave a lot of thought to what they would do on the moon to eke as much science and knowledge out of each moon mission as possible. Lunar geology experiments, lunar seismology experiments, solar radiation experiments, and loads more. And they put mirrors on the moon, special mirrors called retroreflectors that bounce the light directly back to the source in a narrow beam. The time it took for photons in a beam of light to reach the Moon, bounce off it and be captured back on Earth, gave us the precision measurements we have today for the distance to the Moon. This is Buzz Aldrin on the Moon in 1969 with those retroreflectors in his right hand before leaving them on the surface. More retroreflectors went to the Moon on Apollo 14 and Apollo 15 and are still used today as the main method to get an accurate measurement of the Moon's distance at the McDonald Observatory in Texas, using its dedicated 30-inch telescope. But measurements have been made by observatories using these Apollo-era mirrors on the Moon in Hawaii, California, France, Australia and Germany. Despite lasers being so focused, by the time they hit the Moon, 
The beam has widened to about 7 kilometers in diameter and it's 20 kilometers in diameter by the time it bounces back and returns to Earth. But these lasers not only give us the distance, they tell us so much more too. They help us refine the Moon's orbit, first properly calculated by Kepler. They help us refine the quirky motion of the Moon, which suggests the Moon has a small core with a radius of less than 350 kilometers, and the surface is dotted with gravitationally significant metal asteroid impacts affecting its rotation and gravitational field. Getting these precise measurements has also improved our knowledge of changes to the Earth's rotation rate and our spin axis. The lunar distance measurements have also been used to test and further confirm Einstein's theory of relativity. But perhaps most significantly, they also show us that the Moon is receding from the Earth at almost one and a half inches each year. That's about as fast as your fingernails grow. So in 600 million years, we'll no longer get total solar eclipses. And in billions of years, we'll lose the Moon altogether as it moves so far away from us that the Earth can no longer hold on to it. And if we rewind the clock, therefore, we see that the Moon was likely 15 times closer when it was formed. Imagine how that would have looked in the sky with the Moon looking 15 times bigger than it does now. And if you like this show, please do subscribe and give us a like below. You'll definitely not want to miss any of these videos packed to the brim with space and sciencey goodness.